guys. For those of you that are just hopping on, uh, we're gonna give people a couple uh, minutes to join in and we will get started as soon as uh, people are on. All right, so it is 10.32, so we're gonna start. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Shelby, and I work here at the uh, Concord Audubon McLean Center. Um, I am the education coordinator here, and uh, basically what we do, if you aren't familiar with New Hampshire Audubon, uh, we are an independent nonprofit, so we are uh, separate from the um, National Audubon. We make all of our money and um, things through donations and fundraising um, and the support from you guys. So um, our mission here at New Hampshire Audubon is to support or to uh, support New Hampshire's wildlife. Nope, try again. Support New Hampshire's environment for wildlife and for people. Um, and we do that through lots of many different um, branches of the organization. Uh, my a uh, piece of the organization is uh, through education and connecting people with nature. Um, so today we're going to talk about raptors. Um, if you've been following along from the very beginning, you've seen two of my raptors. You're going to get to see a different one today. Um, we're going to talk, before we actually get to see the raptor, we're going to talk a little bit about what makes a raptor a raptor. And if you've been following along, you might know some of the answers to the questions of the things that I'm going to ask. So um, there are five things that all birds have or that um, make them different and unique from let's say a human or a turtle or uh, amphibian or a reptile um, or a mammal even. So these guys all have five things that make them unique and special and we can talk in terms specifically of raptors um, when we talk about these five things. So um, if anybody has an idea of what one of those five things is, just drop it in the comments. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to drop them in there as well. I will do my best to uh, talk and answer questions and uh, things as we go along. So um, I'll give people just a minute to drop if they have an idea of what, uh, what makes a bird a bird, basically. So there are five things that all birds have that make them unique and special. Um, so if you have an idea of what one of those is, drop it in the comment box and I'll give you just a minute while we do that. Okay, so somebody says talons. So all birds have feet um, and lots of things have feet, but what makes birds special is they um, have kind of these, in terms of raptors, they're called talons. So um, if we look at a couple different talons here, we have this one comes from a barred owl, which is this guy right here. So this is a barred owl. And this one comes from an osprey, and I don't have an osprey mount in here, but I think there's one in the hallway, so we'll check that out on our way down there. So um, all birds have feet of some sort. Uh, ducks have webbed feet, songbirds have little tiny feet, um, and raptors have talons. So this is what your average talon looks like. They are pretty gnarly, so these guys are rather sharp. Um, if this was on a real bird, they have a really strong force um, to their talons, so they can grab really hard, um, and they use these talons to grab their food. So our raptors are carnivores, which means that they eat strictly meat, um, so they're gonna need their talons in order to help them grab those things. So these guys eat things like 
In terms of our osprey, their favorite food is fish. In terms of our uh, barred owls, they're gonna eat things that are out at night. So things like mice, rats, and moles, and voles, and things. Um, so they're going to need these sharp talons to help catch the food, and then they use their feet to kind of rip things apart. Um, so uh, you could see that our osprey here has three talons in the front, or three toes in the front, and one in the back. Um, and then our barred owl here has two in the front and two in the back. Um, the cool thing about owls is that they are zygodactyl, which is a crazy big word that kind of sounds like a dinosaur. Um, but what it means is that they can actually move one of their digits or one of their toes back and forth. So they can have three in the front and two in the back, um, or they can have two in the back and two in the front, um, as opposed to our hawks and our eagles and our ospreys and things. They can't move that digit at all, so they're always gonna have three in the front and one in the back. Um, so those are talons, and you can see the barred owls have feathers on them and the osprey doesn't, it just kind of has scales. Um, the difference being that our barred owls are probably gonna hang out during the winter time, um, which means that they need to be able to stay warm when it is uh, winter and snowing and not super warm. And then we have our ospreys who are probably going to migrate uh, where it's a little bit warmer and they're not gonna stick around. So they don't really need the warmth on their legs. Um, and one of the other really cool things I just wanna mention about the osprey is, so I said that these guys really like to eat fish. Uh, one of their favorite foods, they spend a lot of time around ponds and lakes and streams and things because they will kind of nest around there and then they will catch the fish out of the ponds. So on the underside, of their, let me see if I can show you. On the underside of their talons, it's kind of bumpy and sticky. Um, and the purpose for that is so that they can clutch on to those fish. And if you've ever tried to hold a fish before, you know that they get pretty slippery and they kind of slip out of your hands. Um, so this osprey kind of has this special adaptation that allows it to hold on to those fish so it doesn't slip out of their hands or their talons, if you will. Okay, so all birds have feet. Uh, Kelsey says they're beaks. Yes, so all birds have beaks. Um, and raptor beaks are pretty specific to um, each bird. And this guy is a red-tailed hawk. He's an immature red-tailed hawk, which means that uh, he was in his first year of life when he died um, and is now a really nice education mount. Uh, but one of the really cool things about red-tailed hawks is that when they're first born, they actually don't have that famous red tail that you think of when you think of a red tailed hawk. And they do this thing called molting, which is where they lose their feathers and they grow new feathers in. Um, it doesn't happen all at once where they lose all their feathers. It kind of happens gradually and over time and kind of like what a baby tooth kicks out or a adult tooth kicks out a baby tooth. It kind of pushes it out and the baby tooth falls out. Uh, very similar to what happens with their uh, feathers. So this guy we know is an immature red tailed hawk. Um, but their beaks are really cool. So they have this hook shaped beak where it is kind of hooked over and very pointy at the end. And then the edges are really sharp as well. Um, so they're gonna use their beak kind of in conjunction with their feet and their talons to rip things apart. So um, we said that these guys are carnivores, which means that they're going to eat meat. So they're gonna need to be able to eat those things. So when we eat meat, Typically we use a fork and a knife. Hopefully we don't just like rip it apart with our hands and our beak or our mouths um, and our teeth. But um, so these guys are gonna use their sharp beak, their sharp talons um, to kind of act as a knife. So these guys don't have any teeth, um, just a really sharp beak. And um, it's this hook shaped kind of, um, when you think of like a duck bill, it's kind of long and uh, flat very different than this guy. So uh, these raptors have these hook shaped beaks. Let's see, so we said that they, have, they all have beaks and they all have feet and specific to our raptors, they have hooked beaks and talons. Somebody said feathers, yes. So feathers is one of the important, one of the most important things about a bird, um, I think at least. Um, and feathers come in all different shapes and sizes and colors. Uh, this one comes from our resident bald eagle who lives at our center. This is one of his primary flight feathers. 
So um, there's all kinds of different feathers that make up a bird and do different things for different birds. This one is from our barn owl, um, probably just one of his contour feathers. Um, so when we think of feathers, there are a few different types. There are our downy feathers, which are these fluffy ones kind of underneath. And if you have like a down coat, um, that is the, those are the feathers that are inside your coat. Uh, probably not a raptor uh, downy feather, probably like a duck or a goose or something, but um, these guys have the same thing and it keeps them really warm underneath. And then they have their flight feathers, which are the feathers along their wings. Um, there's primary and secondary. So the primary ones are the ones along the tip of the feather or the tip of the wing. And then the secondary are the ones kind of closer in towards their body and um, they basically help them do different things in flight. And then they have their contour feathers, which are all these feathers kind of on top um, that give them their coloration and the way that they look. So uh, feathers are really important for uh, lots of different things, like um, makes up their wings. So without their feathers, they probably wouldn't be able to fly. Um, it keeps them warm. It keeps them dry, so if they're out when it's raining, these feathers have a really, really cool like waterproofing system. So a lot of people think that they have a special oil on them that kind of uh, deters the water, but really, it is just the way that the feather is made up. So um, I can show you here. So if we kind of pull it, you could see that it's all very connected. And these feathers are made up of little barbs. And then, so each of these tiny little things is a barb, and then connected to the barb are barbules, which are the even smaller little things that kind of branch off. And you can't even really see them just by looking at it. It's almost impossible, um, and it would be really hard for me to show you on here. But you can see that those barbules then hook into the barb above it. So they are connected in that way. So the water kind of has no way of permeating or getting into the um, the water or the water has no way of getting in under the feather. So, um, feathers are really awesome in helping them stay warm, helping them stay dry. Um, one of the really cool things about feathers is that they help them camouflage. So, um, something maybe that we wouldn't normally think about when you think of camouflaging, maybe a bird. Um, so a lot of the raptors that I have here, let me show you. So we have our barred owl. We have our um, red-tailed hawk. You can see that there are a lot of shades of brown and white and maybe um, more natural colors. So they're going to blend in really well with the surrounding area. So if it was up in a tree or something, it might be really hard to see because they're camouflaged in with the trees and the bark and the branches and all the little smaller branches. They can kind of hide amongst it because they're basically the same color as it. So feathers are really good for helping them camouflage. Um, and one of the really cool things about owl feathers, so this is a kind of a special little um, thing to know about owl feathers, is that they are, uh, owls are completely silent when they fly um, and it's due to their feathers. So let's see if I can show you here. So if you look at along the edge here, see if I get it to focus. Uh, along the edge here, you could see there's a little comb-like edge to it. And that actually is what allows the air to kind of go through. So it doesn't have so much as a harsh edge like our eagle feather. You could see it's a pretty harsh edge with no comb-like edges. Um, so the air can actually go right through the feathers. And when you think about um, a whole wing being made up of all of these feathers and how silent it is. I think it's really cool. So if we, I don't know how well this is going to work on camera, but we will see. So we go like this. No sound at all. And then we have our eagle feather. Hopefully you guys can hear that. Um, it is making a whole lot of sound. And this one, this is just one feather of a bald eagle wing. Um, so you can imagine how loud it would be with two fully formed wings um, and how they make a lot of sound. So uh, owl feather and eagle feather. Okay, so we've talked about the raptor talons, the raptor hooked beaks, 
the feathers that all raptors have, and then there are two other things that make a bird a bird. And I think I saw one of them up here. So, oh, somebody said wings, yes. So uh, wings are really important for flying, right? Without their wings and without their feathers, they wouldn't be able to fly. So there are different shapes of wings that do different things. This one is a peregrine falcon wing. And if you know anything about those guys, it's that they are the fastest animal in the world when they're diving. So the peregrine falcon can fly upwards of like 230 miles an hour, uh, which is insane to think about something or someone flying that fast. So these guys have to have a special wing that is designed to help them fly fast. So you can see this one is rather pointy um, and kind of slim shape to it. And then we have something like our, uh, our red tail, who I don't have his actual wing here with me, but his wing would be more of a wider shape that kind of just tapers off together. Um, so it's more of a like a rectangle shape. So our red tails are something that isn't really going to be designed to fly fast. They're more of a soaring bird, which means their wide wings are really good for soaring. And so wide wings are good for soaring. Skinny pointy wings are good for flying fast. And then we have some birds that uh, have kind of somewhere in between. So things like our coopers and our sharp shin hawks, they have pretty skinny wings, but they also have um, but they're also pretty fly fast flyers. So um, they kind of have a somewhere in between. So we have the three different types, which is a beautio. So a beautio is our uh, red-tailed hawks, our broad-winged hawks. Um, and then we have occipiters, which are our uh, cooper's hawks, our sharp-shinned hawks, uh, harrier, so our kind of our smaller hawks. And then we have our uh, falcons, which includes our peregrine. We have our eagles and our osprey, um, and then our turkey vultures. And if you've ever seen a turkey vulture flying, they're one of the most distinctive and easiest to identify when they're flying in the sky um, because they fly in a V shape. So if you ever see a bird kind of flying in the sky, kind of teetering around, that would, is gonna be your turkey vulture. Uh, so their wings are really important for flying and their shape of their wing basically tells you what how they're going to fly. So a wide wing is going to give you that soaring bird. A skinnier pointy wing is going to give you that fast flying bird. And then we have our V-shaped and then our eagles are just really big. <laughs> um, so those are the wings. And then our last thing Cynthia just said is a tail. So a tail is also very, very important for these birds. So um, tails are really important for uh, lots of different things. One of the main things being for um, steering when they're flying. So a tail is kind of acts like a rudder on a boat. So it um, can basically tell them which direction they're going to go. So if I was a bird and I was flying um, and I went like this, I would go like this. And if I moved it this way, I would go this way. And if I moved it, let's say we moved it up, I would go down. And then if I moved it down, I would come back up. So their tail is really important in the direction that they're flying. Um, they are really good for helping them balance. So when these guys are sitting on branches and things um, and kind of balancing, their tail is really important for that. Um, one, of the, one of the most common birds that use their tail for balance is a woodpecker. So woodpeckers, if you've ever seen one, you know that they kind of hang out on the sides of trees and they use their feet to kind of clutch on and they'll actually use their tail as a seat and for balance. So what they'll do is they'll kind of flick it underneath them and kind of sit on it and um, watch or look for the bugs and things. So their tail is really important in balance and um, lots of other things, but that's one of the most important things. So tails and there's lots of different shapes and sizes of tails. This one is our uh, red-tailed hawk tail. We have our um, Cooper's hawk here, which you can see his tail is not looking the best. This isn't our best mount we have. Um, but these guys, they have a pretty cool striped tail. And the Cooper's hawk and the sharp shinned hawk are very similar looking. So one of the key uh, features on trying to figure out which is which um, is their tail. 
Um, so the sharp shinned hawk has a more of a square tail, more of a blunt um, sides to it. And then the uh, sharp shinned hawk, or the Cooper's hawk, sorry, has more of a rounded bottom to its tail. So um, this guy is our Cooper's. So you can see it kind of has a round, rounded uh, corner to it. Obviously this isn't our best mount. So, uh, but you can see the stripes on it. The size difference obviously the red tail is a larger bird um, but yeah their tail is really important in using in conjunction with their wings so when they're flying and things um, I said that our red-tailed hawk has those wide wings and he has a wide tail so something with a wide wi wide wings and a wide tail is gonna be really really good at soaring and then we have um, our peregrine who has those sharp pointy skinny wings that's going to be fast for flying is going to have a really kind of skinny tail to it so something kind of along the lines of this maybe even a little bit skinnier so a skinny tail and skinny wings is going to help them fly really fast something in between like our uh, coopers or our sharp shin they have a relatively wide-ish tail and then they have pretty uh, sharp wings so they kind of have the best of both worlds where they have um, the two different types of wings and tails. So, okay, so those are our five things that all raptors have. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go out and visit with one of our uh, resident birds that lives here. So, uh, let's go. And if you have questions, I think I saw a couple questions. I will try to answer them as I'm walking back. What species of owls is the most prevalent in New Hampshire? So, the most common owl that we have here in New Hampshire is our barred owl which was that one that I was just showing you. I think we have another one down here, which I can show you if you missed it. So this right here is a barred owl. Um, they have, they get their names cause they look like they have bars on the front of their chest. Um, and I also told you, I would show you a osprey. So this is what an osprey looks like. Do, do, do. Okay. So somebody says, how often does a raptor eat on average? I see them just sitting and watching. So um, a raptor in the wild is gonna eat probably more often than our raptors do here in captivity. Um, our raptors in captivity eat pretty much once a day, they have a certain amount of food that they get every day. Um, but the raptors in the wild are probably gonna eat a little bit more just because of, um, you know, if they can find the food, they're going to eat it. They're to, um, you know, not eat. Um, so I am back. This is a little like sneak peek for you guys. I am back in what we call our ready room, which is where we prepare all the food for our birds. Um, we are going to go in and see our bald eagle. So I have his food prepared already. Um, so we're going to take that into him. He may come down and he may take it. Um, he might not. He's kind of a, a picky bird usually doesn't eat in front of people. So uh, we will see. Um, but otherwise, yeah, this is our room. We have fridges and um, refrigerators, sorry, and freezers where we keep all the food. Uh, but otherwise, get out there. So this guy really likes to talk. So here, let me flip you around. He is up here on his perch up there. He likes to talk, so we will we will put his food down, and then one of this guy's favorite things is to uh, get a shower. So as you can see here in his enclosure, he has his pool here, and he uh, really enjoys getting in it and swimming around and kind of splashing around in it. Um, so we are going to see if he wants to uh, come down for a shower, which he probably most likely will. Um, and if you have questions about this guy, feel free to put them in the comments and I will uh, answer them as we go. Um, this guy is one of our, uh, or he is our oldest bird that lives here at our center. He is 33 this year. So he is definitely an older bird. Um, as far as bald eagles go, he's definitely getting up there in age and captivity. Um, in the wild, they usually live like 30-ish years. So um, hopefully you can hear me over his <laughs> screeching. Um, he 
is here because he was uh, radio, um, or he was banded as a chick in, when he was a uh, chick fresh out of the nest. And he was, I think he was banded in Ontario, um, Canada. And then he was uh, found in upstate New York with an up uh, with a uh, broken wing. So he, the reason he's here is because he has an amputated wing at the elbow. So he has one and a half wings. Um, and he can't really fly. You can see in his enclosure he has all kinds of different perches and things that he can. So he goes typically from here to here to here to way up there. I don't know if you can see him up there, but he hopefully will come down as soon as we start the hose. So, um, yeah, he's here basically just because he can't fly. Um, and he's one of our oldest birds. And if you have questions, why is he a resident? Hopefully I just answer that because of that amputated wing. Um, so yeah, let's see if he wants to come down. Hopefully as soon as I, I should probably help if I turn the water on. Bear with me here. Uh, sounds like a rusty clothesline pulley. Kind of does. He's a funny sounding bird. But it's a very distinct sound. So when you like hear it in the wild, um, you can definitely tell what it is. All right, so we got the hose on. He might not come down, but we can to spray him up there and this is going to give you a really good shot of his hopefully his amputated wings so you can see that half that he has so it's on his left side and this is his absolute like favorite thing he loves to be sprayed with the hose um, in the wild these guys hang out near uh, big bodies of water um, so his pool here is kind of his um, water source that he gets in and splashes around in. Um, and then we try to give him every day, we try to give him a bath to spray him down, make it all natural for him. Um, somebody asked, what do you feed him? So this guy eats, um, the majority of his diet consists of fish. Um, but here in captivity, he eats things like quail and rats um, which is what he has today. He has some quail and some rats. Um, it'd be nice if he would come down for us. Um, here, I'm going to stop this and he might come down if we just chat here for a minute. Um, so yeah, rats, quail, and fish are mainly what his diet consists of. Um, his favorite thing obviously being fish because that's what he would eat in the wild um, predominantly. These guys can eat things they eat like, let's say there was a deer or something that had um, died in the wild. Um, they could eat off that. They could eat small mammals. Uh, but here in captivity he gets mostly small mammals and fish. Good question. Are they often solitary? Um, so here in captivity, he lives alone. Um, in the wild, I believe that eagles um, mate for life, which means that they um, find a mate and they will stay together forever. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm pretty sure that that is what they do. Um, but here in captivity, he lives alone. He always has, and I'm not sure that he would, uh, enjoy somebody else and is in his enclosure. So, um, yeah, he is solitary. <laughs> I was hoping he would come down. Let me spin you around so you can see him. So these guys have uh, relatively large talons and a relatively large beak. Um, this guy, uh, so if you've been watching a couple of our others, I've talked a little bit about uh, maintenance on their beaks and their talons and things. Uh, this guy really never needs his beak trimmed. He really never needs his talons trimmed. He does a really good job on his own of um, wearing them down. So he has lots of different perches in his enclosure. So we have rocks, we have, um, branches with 
um, rope on it where he can wear them down. He has some bear. He has some turf up there. He has uh, lots of different surfaces, and where he eats his food, he actually has a rock. So when he uh, breaks into the food and he kind of pulls it apart, he actually does a really good job of kind of wearing his beak down on the rock. So um, these guys have relatively large beaks and large talons, but they he does a really good job of trimming them himself, so we don't have to, thankfully. Um, Oh, this is a fun question. So I think I asked when I did the owl and maybe even the hawk um, how much you think that they weighed. Um, let's take some guesses on how much you think he weighs. So uh, I would say he's probably uh, maybe two times the size of our red-tailed hawk. So if you remember how much he weighed, our red tail weighs like a pound and a half or no, no two pounds. He's around two pounds. So, um, if you think of how much you think this guy weighs, I'll give you a, I'll give you a shot of him. So you can kind of get a feeling of how big he is. Somebody says 35 pounds. That's a good guess. Okay, so he weighs, ready for this? He weighs around 10 pounds. So really not that much. Um, they have hollow bones, which basically allows them to be really light for flight. Um, their feathers really don't weigh anything. They don't have a lot of like meat on their bones, if you will. Um, but they are relatively light. When you think about 10 pounds, it really doesn't sound like that much. Um, this guy I have never handled um, myself, but I have handled a bald eagle um, at the University of Minnesota. And when you say 10 pounds, okay, whatever, you have them on the glove um, and you're kind of holding them on your one hand, they get really heavy. I think I held the bald eagle for like maybe three minutes and I was like, my arm was shaking, I was struggling. Um, so 10 pounds really doesn't sound like that much, but it it is a good amount of weight on your hand when you kind of hold them. So. Um, he weighs, I would say, less than you would think, but also he's pretty heavy at the same time. So, yeah. Um, oh, Brad says, are they able to digest bones? That's a really good question. So, um, similar to our hawks, they can't digest the bone, or they can digest the bone, sorry. So, these guys produce a casting, similar to our hawk, where they, um, cough back up it's basically just the fur or the feathers of whatever they've eaten. Um, so not very exciting to dissect and pick apart um, as opposed to our owls when they have their owl pellets. Um, let's see. I was really hoping he would come down, but he might not. He's He is definitely a bird that does whatever he wants. Um, so yeah. Um, I'm probably going to, we'll give him one last shower and then we'll move on. Um, let's see, I'll get him all sprayed down here without spraying myself. getting real excited there he hasn't had a shower in a couple days just because it's been a little cold so I'm sure he's probably really appreciative of this all right shut this off and I'll answer a few last questions as I go we'll say goodbye to our eagle friend we can see him siding. All right. Um, Cynthia asks, do you need to do vet checks ever on him? So yeah, um, every year we have our uh, vet that comes and does a checkup on all of our birds. So um, he does blood tests to make sure that everyone's healthy. Um, 
he does, he, they get a couple shots, so things like the West Nile virus, so they don't get um, any sort of viruses that they could potentially get in the wild, um, or living out in the wild, I guess, if you will. Um, and he typically just checks their beaks, make sure everything looks good, checks their wings, um, so make sure they're healthy in every way, and um, there's nothing wrong with them, so that they can continue living on a, a happy and healthy life. So yeah. And we have our, our vet is Dr. Dutton. He has an office in Ware at the Ware Animal Hospital and then the Hopkinton Animal Hospital. Uh, he is amazing. I would uh, suggest him for anybody who's looking for a vet. Hopefully this doesn't flood his vet with um, new inquiries, but he's amazing. He does specialize in uh, things like raptors and um, I guess, I think it's exotic animals. So, um, or, I'll say special animals. Um, so he does do our raptors. He does our snakes and our turtles and things. So, but he does also do like dogs and cats and things. So he's awesome. And, uh, he is a really great vet to our birds. Um, if we don't have any other questions, um, I'm going to end it here. I really hope that you enjoyed this was kind of di a different, um, a different way of doing it today. And I hope that you enjoyed um, seeing our eagle in his enclosure and kind of what that looks like. Um, if we can, we're going to hopefully continue to do um, a couple more in, we call them mews. So where they live is called their mew or their enclosure. Um, so I'm going to try to do a different, couple different in enclosure talks. We have a couple different birds that we can do it with. So um, keep tuning in. Um, if you want to donate, there is a link in our box or in the title so you can, so we can keep doing this. Otherwise, just keep tuning in and supporting us as best as you can. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed our entire Earth Day week um, with us and learned some new fun green tips throughout the week. Learn some, if you have kids, maybe some fun crafts to do. Um, so yeah, today's Friday and I think today is our last day. So try to tune in to all the fun and exciting things we have today. And um, yeah, I will see you guys possibly next week. I think I am on for the live animal Q&A. So you might see me next week. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in and I hope you have a wonderful day.